Coming in at number 10 for power tools that every workshop needs, it is this. This is a beast of a tool, and if you don't have one, you're gonna want one after this. This is a router from Bosch. Now, you don't have to have this specific router, but this is the one I have, and I tend to invest in tools that I know are gonna last a long time, which is why I have this guy. So with the router, you can do things like round over edges of a tabletop, like I've done here with this workbench, and you can do all sorts of other things that are decorative and finish work Looking at routers, there are two primary types. One's with a fixed base like this here, so that means it's set at a certain depth. The other kind is a plunge router, and as you can see here, this is a plunge type. I can raise and lower the bit as I go. So the most flexible type, obviously, is the plunge router, but a fixed base router is just fine as well if you don't have it in the budget to go with one of these. Next up, we have an oscillating tool. So these are really great for any kind of renovation or demolition work. It has a blade on the front and you can get different types of blades for these. This one will cut through metal and wood. They have other ones that will remove grout. And this is just a great tool to have for any types of work that you're going to encounter around the house, whether it be replacing trim or if you're doing something like retiling a shower, something like that. This is a great addition for any workshop and all the tools I'm gonna to recommend on this video come in either a corded version or a cordless version. It just really depends on what your preference is for that specific tool. Next up, we have a jigsaw. So this is another great tool to have in your workshop. This will not only help you build things, but it will also help you demolish things too, depending on what your needs are. The biggest advantage with a jigsaw is you can cut through a lot of different materials at an angle. So like with a circular saw or something else that has a fixed blade to it, a lot of times it's hard to get an arch or cut in tight circles. With this, you really don't have that limitation. So if you need to cut something other than a straight line, a jigsaw is the way to go. Next up, we have a pocket screw jig. So this is a great addition if you're gonna be doing any type of building furniture, say um, you know chairs or tables, or maybe even shelving units, things like that. This is a great tool to be able to join two different pieces of wood together and do it in a way where the connection is hidden and it's also very secure and very strong. Next up is a reciprocating saw. So this is a great tool to have if you're going to do any type of major demolition. This is something that will cut through wood, metal, pipes, you name it, really, really easily. Now the downside to this is the cuts aren't going to be very accurate, so I would save this for demolition and not construction, but at the end of the day, if you have jobs where this is needed, it's a must have. Next we have a drill. So you probably already have this in your garage, but one thing you wanna keep in mind if you're having to buy a new one is to make sure you get one that's really versatile and it has all the features you need. This has screw control, so that way you can make sure if you have to screw something into a softer material like wood, you can control how much torque is applied to the bit, so that way you don't have to worry about stripping the uh, screw off into the material. Another feature to look for is a hammer drill setting. So if you have to drill any types of holes into masonry products like uh, cinder block or cement or bricks, then you have to have a hammer drill setting to be able to make progress in drilling the hole. Something else to look for on a new drill is a clutch setting, which helps you adjust the speed for your drill bit. Another type of tool that you'll need is a circular saw. So if you're gonna, again, do any type of construction work, if you need to cut through two by fours, if you need to rip down sheets of MDF or plywood or any kind of chipboard or anything like that, this is a really indispensable tool to have around. It can even help you with demolition in addition to construction projects. So if you're gonna have one saw in your workshop, I recommend going with a circular saw. With all that cutting, you're bound to have some rough edges, so you definitely need a sander. The most versatile type is a random orbit sander, just like this one here. And with this, you can apply different coarseness of sanding paper to the bottom by just simply pulling this off with Velcro and sticking on different types on the bottom. The lower the number, the coarser the sandpaper, and the more material you'll end up removing from whatever it is that you're sanding. The next pick is a table saw. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of construction work, uh, like building furniture and things like that where you need really straight cuts, then I highly recommend picking up a table saw. Now you don't have to get one like this, which is uh, a rather large table saw for a home workshop. And uh, this has a cast iron top, which is great. But again, you don't necessarily have to have this if your budget doesn't allow, or if you don't have the room for it. You can also pick up a portable table saw as well, which will help you save a little bit of space and also a little bit of your budget too. Now, if you're gonna go with a larger table saw like this, a lot of times you can add an extension to it like this here, or you can mount a router underneath it. Having a router mounted underneath the table can give you a more consistent result and it can be a little bit easier to use as well. My number one pick for a workshop power tool is an impact driver. Now you might be thinking, well, you already covered a drill, so why do you need an impact driver and a drill? Well, this helps you install fasteners a lot easier than it would if you just simply had a drill because it has a hammering or an impact action built into this. The other advantage is impact drills tend to be a lot more compact, so you can fit these into tighter spaces than you can a traditional drill. So if you're going to be installing a lot of fasteners, screws, bolts, things like that, definitely pick up an impact drill. 
All right, that's my top 10 list. If you disagree with any of my choices or if you think something else should be added, be sure to leave me a comment below. Otherwise, check out this other video here and I will see you in the next video.